All right. Welcome. We are here on our first night of the 10 days of soul food. Some of you received some uh, handed out invitations or flyers to be here tonight here in this venue. And some of you have seen the flyer on our Facebook page and been invited to come to this, this event called the 10 Days of Soul Food. Uh, we know that a year ago, the world and wherever you're at in the communities you live in was being blanketed with this COVID-19, this, uh, COVID the coronavirus. And last year, churches were shut down and many different ministries were shut down. This church is now open again and we're open to using our platform of Facebook to connect with all of our friends to share these 10 days of sermons to fill your soul. We're not cooking here. We're not feeding anyone. We're coming here for the 10 days of soul food to get the bread of life, the spiritual bread of life from the Bible in the souls for those seeking, those who know, those who are following, that your souls would be filled with the word of God. Amen? Amen. And so our whole foundation of what we will hear in all these sermons in the next 10 days, starting tonight, will be from the Bible. The Bible alone. And that's what we're going to be using to present all these messages. So welcome to the Kenyon Memorial Seventh-day Adventist Church, here, those who are here, and those who are connecting with us on Facebook at Kenyon Memorial SDA Church. Welcome. Good evening. This is our first night. This is going to be the foundational message for the uh, speaker that will come after me in, a, in the day's uh, heading through the 10 days of soul food. And so as you connect with us, may you hit the share button and the like button on your Facebook page so that this can go out to more people that would like to know about these topics at this time each and in each of these sermons as are presented each night. I want to just share in an introduction who we will have speaking. Some of you may know these people that will be speaking here from this pulpit on Facebook and here to those who come, members or visitors. I will be pre uh, preaching six of these sermons tonight, Saturday night, and then Monday night, Thursday night, and uh, on the uh, Saturday, June 12th, in the morning at 11 o'clock, and in the evening at 6.30 to finish our 10 days of soul food. Each night it will be from 6.30 to 7.30, except the coming this Saturday, there'll be one at 11 o'clock, and then again at 6.30 in the evening. And so, I will be here tonight, and then tomorrow night, we have Sister Linda Davis, who will be here presenting her sermon. And then Saturday morning, we'll have uh, Lily Witherspoon, who will preach her sermon. And then on uh, Saturday night, myself, I'll be back, and then on Sunday night will be Ann Powell. The next sermon will be presented on Monday by myself, and then on Tuesday, it will be our brother Bill Gray, and then followed up on Wednesday with Dr. Irvin Davis. And then I will be back on Thursday night with another sermon, and then Friday night will be Derek Cloud. And then I'll wrap it up on as I said, Saturday, June 12th at 11 o'clock in the morning and 6.30 at night. So that's our schedule, and that's what we're going to be doing, bringing various sermons to you, and our purpose is to get this me these messages in your souls, and if you're thirsting and hungry for more, then we would invite you to have more in-depth Bible studies, more than you can... Uh, uh, take in in about a 45 50 minute sermon presentation in each of these topics each night so welcome again those who are following on facebook those who are here tonight i'm going to have prayer and then we're going to get right into our our sermon here tonight father in heaven we come together i don't know who's connecting i can't see with uh who's on facebook with us 
could be friends and family of mine. It could be any one of us here. It could be others that have seen the advertisement. Welcome to all those. Bless their homes or the venues or however they are receiving this live message at this time. And those who are here, may your blessing be upon them as well. Members, visitors, younger, older, whoever they may be, that as we come here to share, to preach, to teach these messages each night that will be filled in our souls with the spiritual bread of life. Lord, I ask that your blessing be upon me to preach from the Bible, your word, this message here tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. My sermon this evening is called White Wheat or Spiritual Bread. And what we're going to be focusing, the topic is on the Bible and the Holy Spirit. How the Bible came into being and how the Bible is important for us today. What we call it the good news. In a time when there's a lot of bad news or, or confusing news in this world. However you get your information. And how the Holy Spirit works to help you to understand, to teach, to help you to grow in the knowledge and wisdom of the Word of God. Because that's what we need, is the Word of God to help us today, and today, and today, and whatever days come after, until we uh, see another kingdom that will come. I believe this, and I believe we're in that, that time right now. So as you're with us, uh, the only thing we ask is that you have a Bible next to you. At home on Facebook, wherever you're at watching and viewing and connecting with us, have a Bible with you. When you come here into this uh, church and into the sanctuary, bring your Bibles with you. We don't have uh, currently have any pew Bibles right now, so bring one with you each night. Now this message, to some of you, may be elementary, may be uh, very... Uh, Mundane. You may have heard this before, but my goal with this message is, as I said, a foundation to build upon for each of the speakers that I mentioned will be coming after me. And as we go through these 10 days to fill the souls, those on Facebook, those who come in contact uh, in the actual physical sanctuary with us to fill your souls with the bread of life. Today in this world, and on this planet Earth, we have so many ways to communicate and share the word, word, words with others. If it's news, if it's trivial information, if it's information from the internet or from email uh, uh, sites or social media platforms like we're doing with Facebook here in this uh, getting these messages and sharing them with you. Or if it's by stories that affect many people in many corners of this place we call Earth that affects humanity, either close to us or abound around the world. And then when you do hear the information or words from others, is it correct? Is what they're saying truthful? Is the right source or sources of the information to listen to. And then, when the information does come in, is it convicting to you and helping you to grow in a better way than what you were yesterday, or last year, or when you were younger? So that's what the Bible's all about, to help you to understand words from God, to help you to grow to know what's happening now and in the future, and to sustain you in a world where there's a lot of confusion, falseness, and cruelty, and pain and sorrow. One of the most important inventions that has ever been made by man is the printing press. It was made during a the time of the Dark Ages and into the time of the Reformation period of human history. Man has always had a way to communicate with each other and to uh, bring their information out. Writing words down and sharing them with others so that they could read and understand the information as well. When the printing press 
did come when it came in about um, the dark, as I said, in the time of the Dark Ages, um, it continued to be reinvented all the way down here to 2021. What are you saying about that? Well, uh, we have the printing press, and because of the printing press and written information, then we come all the way down to where we're at in the 20th and 21st century here with computers. And then we have typewriters. And then we have printers and processors and tablets and laptops and PCs and even your cell phones that you can text messages to one another. So the printing press was the foundation for all those things we have today to be able to share words and information with others. Let me pause for a moment because I did not introduce myself to you. And if you're a stranger or a friend, you may not even recognize me. My name is Pastor David Mason. I'm the pastor of the church here in Kenya Memorial, Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Thomasville, Georgia. And again, we want to welcome you here as we begin this, ten, this first night of the 10 days of soul food. The message is um, white wheat or spiritual bread focusing on the Bible and the Holy Spirit. Let's continue. The most extensive work that was first produced on the printing press was the Bible. And it was a Bible that was able to be uh, crafted, printed, put together in the common language of the people in their culture. Today the Bible continues to roll off printing presses all over the world in many different languages and pe for people to know the information in the Bible. Know it for what? To know and understand God, the creator of all. From very ancient times to recent ancient times, and, and, and I'm talking about the less than 2,000 years ago, and in our present generation, when a person, man, woman, older or younger, uh, reads the Bible and what is revealed in it, it becomes a convicting force that causes changes from within in the soul to be revealed outside. Then, when this happens, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. So again, as I said, my presentation is white wheat or spiritual bread focusing on the Bible and the Holy Spirit. I want you to open up your Bibles, those who are here, those who are with us on Facebook, hopefully you have your Bible or electronic device and you can turn to the scripture text that I will present to you. I will aim to give you the scripture text so that you can follow along. Hopefully we can get uh, the scripture text for each of the sermons I present to you online so that you will have them as well. And you can go to the Bible to see what I am talking about as well. Uh, so as you're with us and you're hearing this message, please hit the like button on your Facebook page and share this with others. We're going to first start in 2 Timothy in the Bible. If you go pick up your Bible, open up your electronic device and go to the New Testament and the little letter from Paul to Timothy, the second letter of Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 16. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. And, he sa and it says here, all scripture, how much? All. all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, which is teachings, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Praise the Lord. I'm, I will be coming to you in my sermon presentations using the New King James Version. And so whatever version you may be using, that's fine. It's about the content and the context of what we're using in, our, in, in the version you have. And so I'm bringing this information to you from the New King James Version of the Bible. And so to begin this presentation, what I want to do is share with all of you some major points to consider when it comes to our Bibles and how it was formed and put together 
both the Old Testament and New Testament of what we have today. Because many people in the past sacrificed their lives for the Word of God and to have that written Word of God in their hands. And so I want to give you some kind of bullet points of the Old Testament, New Testament, and how it was put together. And that's what we're going to see now before we get into the actual scripture text referring to the Word, uh, Scripture, and how it's important in the Bible and how the Holy Spirit works to help you to understand, to teach, to bring back remembrance through inspiration by the living God. I need a drink. Hold on. The Bible is the single most influential book in human history in all of civilization. The greatest distinction of the Bible it's inspiration by the living God. The Bible is made up of a collection of books, as we know. The books began as songs and stories transmitted from generation to generation before being written in various processes and in forms in different time periods and generations to what we have today all over the world and here in the United States and in Thomasville and where you live. It's interesting that we have electronic devices that have the Bible on it as well. And so what I want to share with you now is that the English word Bible is from the Greek word Biblia. And Biblia means books or scrolls. In fact, Paul, we just seen the second letter of Timothy, Paul the Apostle used this word when he told Timothy to bring the Biblia or the scrolls containing the Hebrew scriptures. Because at the time there was no New Testament. It was just the Hebrew scriptures. And so uh, our Bibles is a collection of 66 books and letters, Old and New Testament. The word scripture is from the Latin word scriptura, meaning writings. The use of the word, the word in the Bible is in Hebrew and Greek refers to something that was spoken rather than written. The scripture, the scriptures that we have in the Bible were from written authoritative religious texts that were compiled by different religious communities into biblical canons, which are official collection of scriptures. So what is a canon? And I'm not talking about on the field of battle. A canon referring to the Bible is a rule or standard and to be a part of the holy books means the, that a book has particular binding authority for the community of faith. A canonical book or a book of the canon is accepted by Jewish religious authority for a religious practice and teaching and whose authority is binding upon all peoples for all generations. So in the Hebrew Bible, the Hebrew canon I should say, as they developed it, it's divided into three sections. You have the law, the prophets, and the writing that are together in the Hebrew canon of the Hebrew Bible. The first five books of the Hebrew canon are called the Torah. That's where you get law, instruction, and teaching. These form the uh, first five books of the law, Bible called the Pentateuch. And that would be Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy in our Old Testament Bibles. These were accepted as authoritative, sacred, and religious uh, by the Jewish scholars around the 5th century B.C., forming the law of the Hebrew canon. Then came the Hebrew canon of the narrative histories and prophecies that we find in the Old Testament of the prophets, uh, and that's what they grouped them together and called them the prophets.
prophets. So you had the law, and then came the prophets in the 3rd century B.C. Next, you have a third collection of books as a canon in the Hebrew uh, Bible called the Writings, consisting of the Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, and some other historical books, which were compiled between 2nd century B.C. and the 2nd century A.D. These three sections of the canon of the Hebrew Bible are authoritative standards, and they form this Hebrew Bible that, that was was developed and, and came together years and years and ancient times ago because the language that they used was Hebrew primarily that we see in our Old Testament Bibles and today we have from the Hebrew our English language that we can read the Old Testament scriptures the law the prophets and the writings the current text of the Hebrew Bible is known as the Masoretic Text. And this is a standardized and preserved by Jewish scholars known as the Masorets. And their activity of textualizing the Old Testament Hebrew Bible. And this began about the 6th century AD all the way down to the 10th century AD. The Masorets divided and or devised an elaborate system of safeguarding the Hebrew texts and the pro law, the prophets, and the writings. And so that's how we get our Old Testament Bible. Now we're going to look at the Bible in the New Testament. The canon of the New Testament, or the standard or rule or religious uh, doctrines and teachings, that was developed in the 4th century A.D., and applied to a list of books whose content was viewed as authoritative for matters of faith and practice. The New Testament writers accepted the Old Testament as the Word of God, and it is clear from the frequency with which many of the writers uh, support their arguments and teachings. The early church gave authority status by Jesus' words, by quoting his teachings side by side with the Old Testament scriptures to support key points of argumentation and discussion and teachings. The early Christian church translated the New Testament scriptures into what's called Koine Greek language. The, this New Testament Bible was grouped into sections containing the Gospels, the Epistles of Paul, the epistles or letters of the other uh, apostles that wrote them through inspiration, and the prophetic book of Revelation. That's the New Testament canon. It was the, between 385 and 405 AD that the Christian church translated uh, the Old Testament scriptures in the Septuagint, which is the Hebrew translated into the Greek so that they could have the Greek Old Testament just as well as the Greek New Testament. And it was formed into what's called the Latin Vulgate Bible, combining the Greek New Testament with the Old Testament, forming the, the, the Bible that we have today. During the Council of Trent in 1545 to 1563 AD, less or a little over 600 years from us today, uh, they authorized the Latin Vulgate as the official translation of the Bible. The Protestant Reformation gave rise to the translation of the Bible into the common language of the people in their culture. Many translations were printed from the original Hebrew and Greek Bibles into the English translations that we have today. During the Reformation era, the King James Version was authorized in 1611 AD, and it, is, it was one of the most extensive English versions at the time, and continues to be sold even to our present day and to many people around the world. All revisions face problems. 
that a successive version achieves. No version is perfect, but the Bible is no ordinary book because it's God's written word bearing authoritative witness um, to the incarnate word who is Jesus who became flesh, the word that became flesh and dwelt with humanity. Do I have an amen? amen. It's good to hear amens every now and then. I know a year ago, Brother Eugene and I were here presenting messages on, uh, on Saturdays, uh, just he and I, on our Facebook page. But it's great to have people here and to get amens back because then I know I'm hopefully hitting the ears. But we want this message to hit the ears and get into your soul. So those who are following us on Facebook, continue. And we're going to get our Bibles now and go into the Bible about looking at this spiritual bread of life and how the Holy Spirit inspires and helps us to understand the Word of God, to come into our minds, our eyes, our ears, and into the soul to fill us up. So with your Bibles, pick them up. Get ready. We're going to go to the Scriptures now. Uh, we're going to begin in the Old Testament from the Hebrew canon, and as I said, from the Pentateuch. Turn to the fifth book of the Pentateuch, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. That's where we'll begin here as we look at the spiritual bread. And the New King James Version says here, only starting with verse 9, only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself lest you forget the things your eyes have seen and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life and teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Verse 10, especially concerning the day you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb, Horeb, which was also Mount Sinai. When the Lord said to me, gather the people to me and I will let them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth and that they may, eat, may teach their children. And so as we see here in Deuteronomy 10, verses 9 and 10, that the Old Testament Bible text, this is when God addresses his words to Israel and to Moses, and from Moses to Israel, and they had to be accepting of God's word and convicted of it to be able to move forward as God moved with them. Come with me in the Old Testament. We're going to go to one of the writings of the Hebrew canon. If you turn with me to Psalm 119. And for those of you that don't really know where your, your uh, books of the Bible is, that are with us on Facebook, find Psalms. You, you uh, kind of stab at it with your, your fingers and go to the middle of the Old Testament. And you'll come to Psalms. Uh, and we're going to go to 119, chapter 119, and verse 105. Psalm 119, verse 105. And it says, Your word, or thy word, is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. And so right here the psalmist writes that God's word is for all humanity that discovers and reads it. And that it, the word of God, becomes a guiding light for the seeker and the believer as you grow in the Word of God for you each day. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Stay with me in uh, chapter 119. Look at verse 130. Verse 130, Psalm 119. And it says, The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. What's the psalmist saying here? That God's word is for the simplest minds to be able to understand and know. It's not just for scholars and theologians to understand the words of God in the Bible. Even those who are simple. And I'm a simple person too. Well, especially when it comes to technology. In fact, I need a, a um, what's that book that's out? Uh, uh, 
to understand computers, the dumbest? Or the I need I need the dummies guy for the for the for the dummies guy to understand the computers. So so I'm glad that the Bible is even for simple folks like my, me to understand and grow in, not just for the scholars and the theologians. Come with me now to Isaiah chapter 40 in your Bibles. If you're with us on Facebook, follow with us. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. Isaiah, one of the main major prophets here, as I explained before, in the old Hebrew canon, you have the law, we see one in Deuteronomy. We have the writings, we see one in, in uh, a te two texts from Psalm 119, 105, and 130. And here we come to one of the prophets. Isaiah 40, verse 8. And he writes, The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Meaning, creation will come and go, even in humanity, but the word of God will stand forever. How will it stand forever? As the word of God in every generation gets into the soul, into the individual that's seeking after good news and the bread of life. And so the prophet Isaiah here declares that God's words are forever. Meaning that God's word is for all in the past, is for us in the present here in 2021, and for the future, and will remain forever and to all generations. Come with me now to the next book over from Isaiah, another major prophet uh, from Isaiah to Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah and find chapter 15 and verse 16. Chapter 15 of Jeremiah, verse 16. And the Bible says, your words were found and I ate them. We're coming here to eat spiritual food, meaning to take in the words from the Bible. Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. And so Jeremiah is saying, God's words bring joy to those who trust in him. So we looked at some text referring to the written word and scriptures in the Bible. Now we're going to go in the Old Testament. Now we're going to come forward to the New Testament. So come with me to the New Testament of the Bible. And you begin with the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're going to come to the first Gospel here, Matthew. And open up to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 35. Matthew 24, and verse 35. This is a message that Matthew writes by inspiration what Jesus said and did in his ministry on earth. And in verse 35, Jesus spoke, Matthew writes, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Amen? Amen? Amen. Jesus saying, my words will will by no means pass away. So Jesus himself affirmatively says that the word of God is forever on earth as it was in heaven, or as it is in heaven, I should say. Now we're going to go to the Gospel of John, chapter 17. The fourth Gospel of the New Testament, John chapter 17 and verse 17. Continue following me with, following with me, friends, as we continue through this message. And here Jesus is in prayer with the Heavenly Father. And he comes to this point, John writes this message through inspiration. Verse 17, John chapter 17, Sanctify them by your words. Your word is truth. Amen. Here the Apostle, the Apostle John, in his Gospel of Jesus, he records Jesus praying, for the apostles and those who will believe in his words through them after them. That thy words, God's words, are truth. And this is for all believers and all seekers today. Now we want to fast forward a little bit into our Bibles, into the New Testament more. I want to uh, go to Romans chapter 1. Romans is after John, after Acts. 
you come to Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, from the Apostle Paul, this little this epistle or letter. And Paul writes here, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek or the Gentile. And so Paul is saying here, he's writing to the Christians in, the Rome, in Rome that are in the church, the Christian church there, about not being ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, the word that became flesh and dwelt among men and women, humanity. He was, he was the way, the truth, and the life to seek, to search, to find, to follow, and by faith believe in and not be ashamed of. Stay with me in Romans chapter, in the, in the letter of Romans here, and go to chapter 15. Chapter 15 and verse 4. What Paul continues to say in this letter as he's inspired to write. Chapter 15 of Romans, verse 4. And it says, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have what? Hope. hope. Through the scriptures to have hope. Do we need hope today? Amen. Amen. Hang on. We need hope to get us through this day because we don't know what tomorrow brings. So the Apostle Paul writing here to the Christians in Rome about not being ashamed of the gospel, he's also writing here of, to encourage the seekers as well as the believers and for you today, connecting with us here on Facebook, those who are here in the, in the church as well, that as you continue to seek and believe, as you read the Bible, that the scriptures will give you hope for each day. Amen. Amen. And again, we see in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Come back with me to that one scripture again. This is our bedrock or key uh, scripture for this sermon on white wheat or spiritual bread, focusing on the Bible and the Holy Spirit. Again, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by in inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine or teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, the way to live, but as those words come into you, change you from inside out to live amongst others and to have love for God and love for one another. We're going to look now at a little letter from John. If you go towards the back of the Bible, towards the book of Revelation, you come to the three letters of John, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Go to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. John inspired to write this message. This was toward the end of the first century A.D., some 60 years after Jesus went to heaven, and he's inspired by this message. And he says here in verse 13, 1 John 5, These things have I written to you, who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Amen. Amen. So John writes here that those who come to believe in Jesus from the Word of God and what he has done for all humanity and every generation is the result of his Word and he being the Word that became flesh. So how the Bible impacts you comes, it comes by conviction and faith and trust in you by the Holy Spirit. And now we're going to look at some of what the Holy Spirit has uh, to offer in helping you to understand and mature and grow in the knowledge and wisdom of the Word of God in the Bible. The Apostle Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes to Timothy in about 66 to 68 AD while Paul was in prison. 
again, he says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. So we now look at the inspiration, what the Holy Spirit does for each person seeking, believing, and walking with him today. We want to begin again back in the Old Testament. So come with me back to the Old Testament in Numbers chapter 11. Again, we're going to the Pentateuch. In the Hebrew canon, you have Genesis, Exodus, Exodus, excuse me, Leviticus, and Numbers. Numbers chapter 11 and verse 25 is where we would go to start uh, building upon understanding the Holy Spirit's role. And it says, verse 25, Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the seventy elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did it again. So what, what is it saying right here in this verse? That the Holy Spirit came down upon the elders of Israel as he was with Moses. Meaning the Holy Spirit was with Moses and the same Spirit came down upon the elders of Israel. That they would accept his words from God and God's words as authority for instruction and teaching and righteousness. And so now we're going to go back to the New Testament. Come back with me to the New Testament, to the Gospel of John. And we're going to see a few texts here in the Gospel of John referring to the Holy Spirit. John chapter 6, we're going to begin verse 63. Gospel of John chapter 6, verse 63. And John writes here when Jesus is speaking, right after he feeds the 5,000 here in the Gospel of John. And he says in verse 63, oh, excuse me, i got to get there. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words Jesus says that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And so Jesus addresses the crowd and the disciples here that the truth of the words that are spirit filled and they are spirit filled and they are spirit and they have life and that life comes in to the individual seeker and believer to understand a relationship with God through the written word Amen. stay with me in John and go to chapter 14 gospel of John chapter 14 and verses 16 and 17 And John writes here of what Jesus is saying. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, which is another title for the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And for all believers who receive the message of the word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why we want to fill our souls with the Bible. And so here Jesus is instructing his disciples about the helper who is the Holy Spirit that will come to them. And when he is gone from them, they will continue on the message of the written word of God that we have today. Praise the Lord. And in verse 26, same chapter, Gospel of John, verse 26, it says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. And so we have here from John that Jesus is still instructing his disciples about the role of the Holy Spirit and that he is and will be their teacher. He will be your teacher. He will be your teacher as he is my teacher. 
Now, if you come with me to John chapter 15, the next chapter over, and verse 26. And it says, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, Jesus. So here in John 15, 26, Jesus teaches the disciples that the Spirit of truth is and comes from the Holy Spirit. Now we go to the next chapter over, chapter 16 of John, and verse 13. And here John writes, Jesus speaking, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Amen. And so... Jesus, again, turns to his disciples and he declares that the Holy Spirit will guide them into all truth. And they will be able to teach and proclaim to others the truth of the gospel of Jesus and the word of God contained in the Biblia, our scriptures, holy scriptures, for to be in us from our Bibles, the bread of life, the spiritual bread of life. Come with me to Acts chapter 10, right after the Gospel of John, Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. And, and uh, this was a, a message inspired by Luke to write, and he writes here in verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And so here, Luke, who wrote this book of Acts, as he did the, the Gospel of Luke, through inspiration, shares how the Holy Spirit came to or fell upon Peter as he was preaching and teaching about Jesus. And that will happen to you as well. When you eat the Word of God, you come into a message of the Gospel of Jesus and share it with someone the Holy Spirit will come upon you and give them what to say, give you what to say. It may not be something great. You may not remember all scripture. I don't remember all scripture, but the Holy Spirit will give you in that time what to say to that individual. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, come with me, one book over, one letter over, I should say. Romans chapter 8, verse 9, and Paul writing here, but you are not in the flesh. But in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. So if you have the Spirit of Christ and dwelling in you, you are of his. The seeker, the believer, the one following, the one uh, that, that's uh, a Christian or non-Christian as you're seeking, the Christ will be in you. And the one who is not, Christ isn't with you. That's true words. And it's uh, sobering words, but we need to hear that. Paul writes that when there is changes that happens in your life to the seeker, to the believer, that results in doing and abiding in the righteousness of Christ, that it's the Holy Spirit that is in you that you allow to come to change your heart, your mind, your soul, and to give you strength to follow in his ways. Not my ways, not our ways, but the ways of God. That it will be the same today on earth as it was in heaven, because when we go to heaven, it's not the news of the day. We want the good news of today from the Bible to help us to continue going on long after today. Come with me to 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 14. This will be the last scripture text we look at in the Bible, Second Timothy for today, Second Corinthians, right after Romans, or excuse me, First Corinthians. I'm sorry. Come with me to First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two, right after the, the letter of Romans, we go to this little letter of 
uh, to the Corinthian church from Paul. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 10 through 14. And here Paul writes, But God has revealed them to, the, to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14, But the natural man or woman does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him or her. Nor can he know or she know them, because they are spiritually discerned or understood. And so Paul writes here that the Spirit of God is necessary for the seeker as well as the believer to know, to grow, and to mature in becoming spiritually discerned or knowing and understanding the scriptures. When it comes to uh, knowing and understanding our Bibles and growing in faith by what the Holy Scriptures say, by what the Holy, scripture, Holy Spirit brings upon you, those who are seeking, thirsting, and eating, and wanting to know more to grow in, in a relationship with God. I hope that this message, for those who are on Facebook with us, those who are here, will be one that will settle in to your minds, hearts, and souls. As I said, the key text for us today was 2 Timothy 3.16. How much scripture is inspired? All scripture is inspired in the Bible. It's inspired of God. So I hope as you leave here, this resonates with you in your mind, heart, and soul. Sometimes when you create, when you make a nice uh, pot of soup or stew, it's good that day. But as you let it simmer, what we have today is it contains translated and transliterated and preserved words of God pertaining to what Jesus said, what he did, what, what he, as he became sac the sacrifice for all your sins, for your sins. The Bible is different from any other book because it re its revelation to you be depends on an existing relationship, an internal testimony by the Holy Spirit. And as we see about the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit is to reveal truth and to inspire you, not as the world teaches or wants you to know, but into uh, the Word of God, the Bible, which leads each and every soul into salvation. Praise the Lord. Inspiration is the process. It's the process that which moves the original revelation in and it's recorded in the Bible, communicated from God to those who are seeking Scripture as the Holy Spirit uh, instructs and teaches and inspires you. The, whole, the illumination of the Holy Spirit means that each person can understand, all, even the simplest, like Psalm 119, 130 said, that each person can understand the will of God by reading the Scriptures in our Bibles by participating in worship services with like believers. I end with these three points. May the Bible and the Holy Spirit be the two forces in this world today that helps you, each of you, know what sources to trust in and with all the confusion in the world that you can know where you can turn to to have hope, to have light, to have guidance and inspiration each day. Trust in the inspired Word of God. Trust in the words of God contained in your Bible. Also trust in the Holy Spirit to guide, to teach, and to bring to your remembrance the Holy Scriptures, to be able to walk in the Spirit and to do the will of God. 
If you desire to have more studies of the Bible, pertaining to the Bible, and of the Holy Spirit and His role, then I ask that you will sign up for Bible studies for this topic, and in the, the 10 nights of this, 10 days of soul food, from whatever, whoever is going to be presenting their sermons, that if you have a desire for additional Bible studies, that you sign up on your way out of here, and for those who are here. Those who are on Facebook, we have two different email addresses, and that should be on our Facebook page, one for the church, and also my personal email page, martoreo at yahoo.com. That's M-A-R-T-E-R-A-O at yahoo.com. And if you desire to have more Bible studies about these to the, this topic tonight, or any of the topics mentioned, please um, send me your contact information, and we'll get you uh, Bible studies at the conclusion of this series. And so tomorrow night, as I said, Sister Linda Davis will present a message like the Father, like the Son. So may you be blessed with what you've heard tonight. Come back tomorrow night. Hit that like button on your Facebook page and also share this message with those in, in your circles of influence and in your Facebook page as well to others. Thank you and God bless you. Father in heaven, we ask for the inspiration that came upon the Bible for us to know and prophets of old, the patriarchs of old, the disciples of old, the apostles of old, and seekers and believers tonight. That's the same inspiration of the Holy Spirit be upon us each time we come to the Word of God in the Bible. Thank you for your Word. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for your salvation. Send us home and bless us with a good evening. Bring us back tomorrow night at 6.30 here on this Facebook page and here at this venue. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.